drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore take a tour on a peaceful country road and found to be back for more of Norfolk, Norfolk, my cousin county home With hard work, we built a dream that only Will and Hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals, too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dog woods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here and are proud to call it our own. No. Southern County home No foe, no foe We know you can't go wrong With the friendly folk of no foe You won't be a stranger long Take in the small town atmosphere Be amazed at all that we grow Like our kids that go and see the world can't wait to return home Drop a line in a placid lake Or stroll along the shore Take a tour on a peaceful country road And found to be back for more Of Norfolk, Norfolk My cousin county home Hard work, we built a dream that only Will and Hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals, too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dog woods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. Stranger alone.
Okay, welcome back. Let's, uh, we're going to start now with deputations. I would like to ask Ms. Ann Minia, is she here? From Port Rowan, South Walsingham Heritage Association to the podium to speak to her. Deputation respecting Canada's first forestry station interpretive center. Ms. Winia, welcome. You have yes. 10 minutes. Mayor Luke and councillors, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to start with a question, but I'm just wondering how many people have ever been out to Canada's first forestry station and seen it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's changed. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a heritage building that is built a uh, 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 clapboard on the outside, chestnut ceilings on the inside, pine walls and maple floors, and it was all local wood built by by hand by the local people in uh, 19, about 1912 or 10. We have a sawmill exhibit there now, which I'm sure you would all enjoy seeing and it'll be, um, again this year we'll have it open. There are artifacts from local sawmills of over 100 years ago and some on loan from the Eva McDonnelly Museum and the Delhi Museum. The Tremaine map uh, is also on the wall and is marked with uh, over a hundred sawmills pinpointed on the map of Norfolk. I think you'd find it very interesting. And we're open by appointment during the winter months and um, in the summer months when we have our student from Victoria weekend to Labor Day uh, every day except Tuesday. So Canada's first forestry station interpretive centre committee, a committee of the Port Rowan South Walsingham Heritage Association, is responsible for the upkeep of the heritage building, which was the original office of Canada's first forestry station, and re responsible for the preservation of many artefacts it houses. This station was established in 1908 and was responsible for changing Norfolk County from a desert wasteland to Ontario's garden by supplying and planting trees and educating the public. The centre is open to the public um, to illustrate the local history and remember the men and women who worked there. Our present exhibit of the sawmills of yesteryear illustrates well the story of Norfolk County's past 200 years. Our committee was responsible for approaching the Canadian Forestry Association to have Norfolk designated Forest Capital of Canada in 2008 and 2009. Recently, in addition to events, we have had about 600 visitors per year. We do not charge a fee, we ask for a donation. Canada's first forestry station interpreter centre is designed by the Long Point World, was designated by the Long Point World Biosphere Reserve Foundation as one of Norfolk's amazing places. In November, we read about the county grants to several cultural organizations and projects and we would like to apply for some of that funding. Our Heritage Association is a charitable non-profit organization with volunteers who have been taking care of maintaining this building for 15 years, keeping it open and organizing events to attract visitors. Upkeep of our building, upgrading signage, chaining exhibits, organizing events and hiring a summer student are our major costs, which are considerable. With the decrease in the federal funding and the increase in provincial minimum wage, it would help us considerably if we received assistance with our major expenses. We're not aware, we were not aware of this funding until the article appeared in the Simcoe Reformer in November uh, after the October 1 deadline. We applied for the, to the county for funding in 2011 but never received any money as we were able to find other sources of income. But our financial assistance, but your financial assistance for this amazing place now and in the future would greatly assist us in continuing this project and we hope you will consider us when you distribute the funds. We can provide details of expenditures if required. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Just hang on, there might be some questions. Councillor Wells. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much for your presentation. And you certainly do a wonderful job. Uh, my question to you is, what kind of funding were you hoping to get if you had your request in on time? What would you have been asking for? Oh, I, you'd like us to, to designate a certain amount, do you? I'm wondering what... The, yeah. Yes. Um, one to two thousand dollars would be really helpful. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair. Mayor Luke. Thank you, and uh, certainly, uh, and uh, thank you for being here. And yes, it is an amazing place. 
<laughs> and Thank there's you. been a lot of work and dedication there. So, but I guess my question is, I want to be clear. Um, are you expecting some money or asking for some money for 2018, or are you giving a heads up for an application uh, that will be submitted in the fall for next year? What, what do you think? 2018 would be really, really helpful. If we didn't get it in 2018, it would be helpful in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it's your decision. <laughs> yeah, well, I knew the answer before I asked the question, but I wanted to make sure. I, so, Mr. Chair, I don't like to handle money if they don't want it. You know, right? <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. Councilor Black, please. Sort of a similar question. So um, I guess you, you have the opportunity to apply for it in the fall when the applications come out. So um, I guess it'll probably it'll go through the process. I mean, I don't have any problem with, with it, but we do have the process that we have to follow. So, okay, but thanks for coming. Yeah, I'm sorry we didn't know about it before. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah, yeah. I was not aware of it. But our, uh, our budget total is 11,800 for this year. So. Do you th I do think it's a, definitely a, a worthy venture that needs to be considered. Okay. Okay, I see no further questions. So, Ms. Winnie, thank you for your presentation, and thank you may you. be seated. Thank you. I need a mover to receive this. Councillor Wells, seconded by Mayor Luke. All those in favor? Thank you. Our second deputation is either Arbent Fajkowski and or Setmer Fajkowski to the podium to speak to their deputation regarding a storm line in Waterford, I believe. Your name, please. Setmir Fekowski. Setmir, thank you. I am the owner of 21 Factory Alley, and Arben Fekowski is the site supervisor. So we are here regarding um, a three-by-three three corroded storm line running through the property. Uh, just to go through uh, what happened before, the lot was bought in September of 2014. Uh, at the time of the purchase, a title search was done. Uh, with an existing survey, nothing indicated of this uh, storm pipe at the time running through the property. In October of 2017, we did apply for a building permit. Uh, it was granted in November of 2017. Uh, on November 22nd, we requested locates for the property. And again, nothing showed up on the locates. So on the 23rd, we went forward with excavation. During excavation, he ran into a large steel pipe located in the back left corner of where the building was supposed to be. Uh, this meant that uh, the building would have to be shifted so it would not sit on the pipe. At this point, we did not know what this pipe was, so excavation had to be stopped. A uh, building inspector was called over that same day. He proceeded to take some pictures, look at the pipe, and after some back and forth, uh, we contacted the engineering department at Delhi and uh, building department at Simcoe. Uh, conclusion was come to that the pipe was a storm line um, that was currently in use. It was connected to catch basins on Factory Alley. At this point, the proposed house must be moved forward 12 feet and to the right two feet. The surveyor was contacted to see if it was possible to fit the proposed house on the existing lot. Uh, after a couple days, the surveyor successfully changed the location and pinned the new location. The excavator was brought back in uh, to start digging the new location, and uh, we did notice substan a substantial amount of water coming in through the pipe. The building inspector was again called in, and uh, he recommended that we get a soil engineer to take a look at uh, the soil. So Englobe was called in. Uh, and they basically said that we would have to run a pipe and run it 24 hours so the soil did not get too wet. So a pump was eventually brought in and it had to run 24 hours. We had to have somebody there at all times. Um, so we uh, then proceeded to excavate all the soil and bring in type A gravel, which uh, Englobe did recommend. So this took uh, approximately two weeks 
to take out all the old soil, bring in type A gravel with uh, compaction tests done periodically by Englobe. In total, there are 52 tandem truck loads of wet soil hauled out and 48 tandem trucks of type A gravel brought in. And during this time, there was somebody present 24 hours uh, at the pump. Uh, this set back our budget approximately $30,000, not including any time spent of ours. Uh, so we felt that this entire process could have uh, been avoided if Norfolk County uh, registered an easement on the title. We would have known in advance that there was a storm line running through this property. Uh, so we do have a picture and some videos of the pump and the storm line. Yeah, so we can show the picture first, and, or video first, doesn't matter. So, that's the pipe there. We'll just wait a moment there. You can see that it's running right down through the lot there. And we have it covered up because it is corroded in some spots. We didn't want any dirt to get into it. And you can see where the water is running. and it's flowing down to the pump. And if you want to stop that and just show the picture. That is the actual pump that we had set up. Yeah. So if there's any questions, I'll call up uh, Arbin, as he was the site supervisor and he was there most of the time. If you want to step up to the mic, please. Questions to the presenter. Councillor Black. Well, Mr. Chairman, through you uh, specifically, what is it that you're requesting Norfolk County to do? Well, we're requesting, we want to know what's going to happen with the storm line because this is going to impact us for a future selling. If we want to put any swimming pool in the back or any uh, a deck, we can't put nothing in the back. The storm line is still going through the property. And, uh, and all the water that's coming out of that pipe. Thank you. And I guess after the deputation, we need to hear from staff or get a report on this, I would think. If I might ask a question, how did you incur $30,000 because you had to change the footprint of your house? Well, after we changed, like, uh, we had to brought the excavator back, but then we ran into a, a water running out from the storm line that was so corroded. So uh, the, the engineer, they wanted us to get to the bottom, like to hard gravel, and then fill it up. So we get about, at, at the beginning, the foundation is going to go eight feet down, but we end up changing the foundation to above the storm line now in order to get it, to put a foundation in. So we, to, we had to ra raise that up. Now the foundation is above the storm line, uh, about a foot above the storm line. So you had already started construction when you discovered the pipe. You, you just no, no, we you just didn't. started the excavation. We're supposed to go eight feet down to put the foundation, but we, we end up stopping at four feet. Okay. So then we relocated the house, and we continue with the excavation when we relocated 12 feet forward and a f two feet to the right. But then we ran into all that water that was coming out of the storm line. So we had to excavate, go now, down to nine feet, get to hard gravel, and then raise it up five feet to above the storm line. Okay. I understand now. Yeah. Councillor Height, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to the deputation, uh, when you were doing the excavation and you ran into the pipe, did you happen to call Public Works and ask them why their pipe was on your property? Well, yeah. We, well, first, we don't know what that pipe was, okay? So we called the building inspector. That's the only person that I knew. So he put everything on hold, and then the next day he says, well, we're going to have to talk to the Public Works. So then 
I called Gary and I waited. He said I'm gonna. He said he's gonna let me know in a couple of days. I waited for a week. I didn't hear anything. Then I called back. He says, "Well, that's that's a storm line, and you." So he gave me all kind of drawings that shows that the storm line is going and it's in use. So he says, "You have to relocate the house. We can't break that pipe." And that's when all started. Okay. But I haven't heard anything yet that what they're gonna do with the storm line. And, and there's no easement in place right now? There's no easement, never was and never is. That's so you bought so the property? So it's the frustration, we don't know there. what's going to happen with this. Yeah, we bought this. Had we knew when we bought this property, we probably won't buy it. Okay. Thank you. Council Councilor Brunton? Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, what are you building there, a house? House, yeah, raised barn. Well, it's a house for my son. Is it a So when he said the site supervisor, I'm not a site supervisor. I'm just trying to help him build a house. <laughs> okay, and uh, but how big is your lot? It's 57 by 107 feet deep. Okay, and this pipe is right on the edge, or is it in quite a bit? Well, it, I don't have a map to really see it either. Yeah, we do have some maps if you want to see that what we got from Gary and Terry from uh, from Delhi. Yeah, I'd like to know where it is in the lot. Like, is sure. it in? Uh, is that in that picture there? Is that a transformer I'm seeing on the corner over there? What is that big black thing on the corner? On the corner there, on the bottom, you mean? No, at the top, up uh, like. Foundation. Upper left. That's the, the, that's the, uh, the okay, foundation. I wonder. Uh, so yeah. you did get your foundation in then. Yeah, after, after everything that we located. We have more pictures if you want to see, like, uh, at the beginning. And, and who, told, who, who told you to take that amount of fill out? The Englobe did. Who? Because those Englobe engineering firm. Okay. Because the water, the amount of water coming from that pipe is just getting all the soil wet. So did you excavate the whole lot down there? Yes, I did. Wow. And there was a house sitting on top of that storm line for I don't know how many years. Okay, thank the, you. The existing house was uh, was built in 2000 and no, in 1985, and it was burned in 2012. So there was a house sitting, and we tried to put the same, uh, the new house in the same location. Which way is the water going there? It's hard to tell. Going left or right? It's going to the right. So there's a pond in the back, like it's running that that storm line running from uh, factory alley through. My property, next door neighbor property, into the pond. There's a yeah, water pond on the back. Yeah, I can't tell, but just kind of curious where it's located. Can you, can you bring those uh, the, the surveys and the, the pictures there? So you said you did contact Public Works, and, and they haven't told you anything, though. Well, Gary said that something is going to be done with that pipe, but he doesn't know what. Okay. And that was it. Like even when we called for locates, nothing was located to indicate there's a storm line in there. I understand that. Yeah, e even like when I went to uh, Delhi, they didn't even know, so it took like a week to find out what that storm line was. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mayor Luke? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. And just uh, reading through the information here, you know through the Chair of the Deputy, you know how old this pipe is? don't know. Yeah, because in this here it says that uh, Norfolk County failed to register an easement. Well, it could have been there before 2000, so that's not to say another municipality uh, maybe neglected to register. I don't know, but uh, now this is something I, I don't feel that I'm going to solve here tonight, that this needs to be turned over to staff for, for further, but... Uh, well, that, that storm line there is definitely before 2000. Yeah, uh, that, so for it, sure, maybe yeah. the city of Nanico, or yeah. maybe even before yeah. then. I don't know. But anyhow, um, I think we need to have staff look into this. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, seeing no further questions, I'll ask you to take your seat. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. And we'll have to ask staff questions. So you may be seated. I think... Uh, Ms. Robinson was waving her hand over here. She wants to tell us the, the story here. Uh, uh, through the chair to council, to answer uh, Mayor Luke's question, the storm pipe was built in 1962. So the storm sewer has been there for a considerable period of time. Public Works, uh, when the gentleman came forward, our original concern 
um, with respect to the pipe was how to assist them in going forward and building the building as expeditiously as possible. Um, we worked with them and were able to do that. Um, we are aware of their concerns and we are working we can't, unfortunately, this time of year, we really can't do any sort of construction work with respect to it, so we're working on a plan to do that. And I would respectfully request that it just be referred back to staff for a report, and we'll bring forward a report uh, with our suggested solutions, et cetera. It is something we're working on anyway, but we'd be happy to bring that report forward to Council. Thank you for that. Who, uh, Mayor Luke, please. First, I would move we receive the deputation as information. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. That's okay. We'll keep you on your toes. Yeah. Seconder. All those in favor? All right. Councillor Black, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, I, I think it requires a staff report, and staff said that they'd uh, be happy to bring that forward, so I would make that a motion, requesting a staff report in regards to the deputation's concerns. Okay. Seconder? Wells? Further discussion on that? Councillor Brunton? Yeah, just very quickly, uh, whatever we're doing with the report, we're not holding the people up. I assume their house is underway. Okay, thank you. Okay. Councillor Black? I don't know if they need a timeline on this. Any idea how long? Um, through the Chairman to Council, uh, we acknowledge the expeditious manner in which it is. I'd prefer not to put a specific date on it. We're extremely short-staffed in engineering right now. Um, and we have a few other matters that we discussed earlier that we're also tackling at the same time. Um, but we do acknowledge that it does have some effect on this property and we will be bringing it forward in the spring because ideally it's something that we would like to undertake work um, given the proximity of it to the Waterford Ponds, the ground is extremely saturated in that area. Um, and obviously we would like to do any work during the dry season, which would typically be late July, early August, um, with respect to getting that the matter addressed. So something will be coming forward in the spring. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Further, Mayor Luke? I support the recommendation, but one thing I do want to ask, and I know that report's coming forward, but through to you, Lee, has this pipe been repaired to your satisfaction? In other words... There's no more leaking, there's no more danger of a future leak on this construction site? I, through the Chairman to Council, we have not done any repair work on the pipe. The pipe, the, um, some of the deteriorated areas of the pipe are actually allowing the groundwater to come in, so we're actually dewatering the area. And if we did it in its entirety, it's going to affect the groundwater in that area. And until we have a permanent solution, we didn't want to actually start altering the groundwater table in that, in that area. It's because of the proximity to the ponds. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? All right. We have a motion that's been seconded that uh, we uh, have a report brought back to deal with this matter. Anyone else? All those in favor? That is carried. All right, thank you. You will be hearing from us. Maybe not as soon as you'd like, but you'll be hearing from us. Thank you. All right, let's go back to... Okay, let's go to staff reports. First one up is staff report from Health and Social Services 18-01, Homelessness Prevention Services, a budget amendment. Heidi, you're thank, up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will be presenting this report tonight. The purpose of this report is to seek council approval for the delivery of homelessness prevention services by a team within the social services and housing department made up of permanent and temporary staff positions. This is a follow-up report to staff report HSS 17-26 entitled Homelessness Prevention Program Review Implementation that was considered by counseling committee at its meeting of October 2nd and by Council at its meeting of October 10th of last year. Council will recall that staff were directed to issue a request for proposals, or an RFP, for the homelessness prevention services as outlined in the staff report. Staff from the Social Services and Housing Department and Norfolk County Corporate Support Services Purchasing Team developed and issued the RFP in accordance with Norfolk County's purchasing policy, and the result is that there were no bidders. 
Staff have reviewed the original proposal that was presented to Council and considered the feedback that was received from the Advisory Committee and Norfolk Council, and the result is the amended proposal that is before you today. The number and functions of the staff positions being requested is the same as the original request. However, staff have identified functions that are essential or core services for the homelessness prevention work and are requesting that these positions be approved as permanent. Specifically, they are the program manager, the intake diversion worker, the emergency shelter worker, and one of two housing support workers. The other positions are new positions that are required to ensure that the homelessness prevention services are delivered in a client-centered, coordinated fashion using the Housing First philosophy. However, staff are requesting the positions as one-year temporary positions, and we will complete a workload assessment before the end of that year to determine what level of staffing is required on a permanent go-forward basis. If the, positions are not, can, if the positions can be reduced from a full FTE, then we are committed to doing so. Specifically, these positions are the second housing support worker, the housing stability bank administrator, landlord mediation and outreach worker, and the data analyst program evaluator. In the report, staff have provided counsel with a description of each position and have identified the positions that provide direct service to clients. Staff have also committed to bringing forward to Council on an annual basis a report that outlines the breakdown of spending in the, in the CHIPI by cost centre and confirms that the program spending is remaining within the CHIPI funding envelope provided by the Ministry of Housing. I'd like to make a couple of notes uh, to Council regarding the RFP. In the writing and issuing of the RFP, the Norfolk County purchasing policy was completely followed by staff. The RFP was issued on November 13th and closed on December 5th. This is a longer time than is usual, usual at Norfolk County, but it is consistent with other RFPs that have been issued by the Social Services and Housing Department, specifically the RFPs related to the affordable housing development and the administration of the licensed home child care program. The scope of the RFP was exactly as was presented to Council in the original report and is being presented to you today. As this is the team structure that was recommended by Org Code Consulting, who is a world-renowned consulting firm on the issue of homelessness prevention and ending homelessness, as a result of their CHIPI program review. And it's the minimum that staff feel is required to provide homelessness prevention services across our two-county area. The requirements of the RFP were in keeping what is, what is usually required by Norfolk County and with what has been required in other RFPs that have been issued by our department. For example, the experience and reference requirements were exactly the same as those that we asked for in the RFPs for affordable housing and the administration of the licensed home child care program. I would also note that during the time that the RFP was open, there were no questions asked from potential bidders and there were no requests for extension to the time to submit a bid. This report has been presented and considered by the Health and Social Services Advisory Committee, during which time there was discussion about the option to reissue the RFP in whole or in part. There, I would like to Council to know that there was some support for this option, but no final direction was given to staff regarding an RFP and the reissuance of an RFP, and that is why it does not appear as part of the recommendation of the Health and Social Services Advisory Committee in your report tonight. Advisory Committee did direct staff to meet with our current service delivery partner, the Dunville Salvation Army Community and Family Services, to inquire whether they were interested in having their contract extended by six months. I met with the Salvation Army to discuss the possibility and parameters of a six-month extension. The terms of the extension would be that they would continue to deliver the services they are currently delivering and that they would be issued funding from the Housing Department as the Consolidated Municipal Services Manager on a monthly basis with required statistical and financial reporting at the end of each month. Program spending would be reconciled each month and any unspent funds would be recovered by the Housing Department at the end of the contract. I would also be meeting with the manager of the Dunville Salvation Army on a monthly basis to review the program statistics and the spending levels with day-to-day -day operational support 
being provided by the Program Manager of Housing Services. In closing, when this issue first came to Council, there were a number of questions related to the extent of homelessness in Haldimand and Norfolk. And while we don't have a true picture of the extent of this issue until we complete our first homelessness enumeration in May of this year, there are some program statistics from last year um, that I wish to share with Council about the usage of our homelessness programs. The number of households experiencing homelessness who use the emergency shelter program was 476, with the average length of stay by a household being 18 days. The number of households experiencing homelessness who received non-shelter supports and services was 1,256. And the number of households at risk of homelessness who received non-shelter services and supports to prevent their homelessness was 642. So as Council can see, this is a program, these are programs that are used by a number of households across our two counties. And in fact, the number of households that have used our homelessness programs are comparable to those who use the Ontario Works program. We are quickly approaching our fiscal year end of, of March 31st, and so um, we really do, do need to, to move forward with determining what our service delivery model will look like so that we can ensure that there's no break in service to the vulnerable people in our community who use these services. Thank you for your consideration, and I'd, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Heidi. There will be questions. Councillor Brunton, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I, I don't know that we need to uh, go back through the report, but um, Council will recall when it came to the uh, Council, there was a hiring of seven people, and we, uh, we, we wanted to go a different route, so we called an RFP. That RFP came before the, uh, sorry, the report came back to the advisory committee, as you see it, basically, and uh, the indication was there was four picked up, but nobody bid the job. I, during that time period, was contacted by a couple of uh, potential bidders, I'll use that word, and they, uh, they were not happy with the time frame they had to bid the job. And I, I, I appreciate what Heidi says, they had uh, the normal time that they allow for an RFP, but uh, for a project, there are of this magnitude, I don't think an, enough time was allotted. And that was felt not only by myself, but the Haldeman members that were on the advisory committee also. Um, so we asked, and I'm, I apologize, Heidi, but I thought we asked to go back. I know we asked to go back and get an extension to provide the service on the interim, but we also, I thought we had asked to, uh, recall the RFP and give it more time for these people to uh, to bid the project. Now, in that time frame, I've spoken at length with uh, the, the um, Salvation Army, and one of the things that twigged me about the overall project, and this happened back when they were looking at it at the first point, and that was one of their ideas is to utilize the Norfolk Hotel for uh, this type of service. And they indicated they had talked to the owner of the Norfolk Hotel and that they were going to um, uh, make arrangements with him. I, I don't know if it would be through a lease arrangement or whatever, but they wanted to set up offices right in the, uh, the main part of the uh, hotel there to provide these services. Now, I don't know, I didn't get a lot of detail on that because uh, he had to, at the time, is a gentleman by the name of David Mole. He uh, seems to be the front man for this particular uh, service. So anyways, uh, that's really what tweaked me, and I just spoke with Heidi a few minutes ago before this came on the floor, and um, there's no guarantee uh, that if it goes back out for an RFP that... Um, the service level will be any different, or if anybody will even bid the job. But we all felt, at least I did, and I don't know Councillor Wells and Councillor Sonnenberg, that it was worth a try. And uh, 
And what really caught my ear was the fact that the Norfolk Hotel may maybe uh, have a possibility of coming into play in the whole program. So when you look at that part of it, I, uh, I think if I could suggest anything, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think the first two motions there have covered what uh, Heidi indicated, but uh, I would like to see us at least try for an RFP again with a longer period uh, uh, and allow these people to bid it. And uh, it gives them more time. It is quite extensive, and uh, I think it would be uh, in our best interest to do that. So anyways, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Would you like to respond, Heidi? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through to Councillor Brenton. Um, I, I won't comment on um, the potential proposal that may come through in an, in an RFP. I don't, um, I don't think that that would be appropriate or in keeping with our purchasing policy. Um, in, it, however, in response to the question related to the advisory committee meeting and um, the motion that was passed by advisory committee, in preparing um, for the meeting, uh, we did go back and review the minutes of the Health and Social Services Advisory Committee and the final motion that there were various options that were discussed by Advisory Committee and I did advise um, committee members that in order for us to reissue the, uh, to extend the contract of the Salvation Army, that um, and a council would re be required to pass an exemption to the purchasing policy to do so. Um, and should that be the wish of council tonight, I do have some, some draft wording uh, of such a motion. Um, I can confirm that there, there, was, there was no direction given to staff about the preparation of a second RFP. Um, and that is why it does not appear in your report tonight as part of the recommendation from advisory committee. Okay, thank you. Next speaker is Councillor Wells, please. Well, th <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, and I was confused at the meeting, and I guess I am still confused, and for that I apologize, but you people should get used to the fact that I get confused now rather easily. I thought, and as you know, I serve on the Health and Social Services Committee, and my memory is a little bit different than Heidi's, but that's not to say she's wrong. It's just that I didn't remember it quite like that, and she has the paperwork that showed that I am wrong, so that's okay too. I thought, I thought what happened is that we went out to an RFP, we had no bidders, and the question was there wasn't enough time. I thought the committee suggested that we rebid it, offer it again, and offer more time to see if we could get any more bids. But obviously, and again, Mr. Chair, I am not being critical of Heidi. It is my fault if I misunderstood the direction that we gave. And for that, I apologize. But in my mind, I thought we were going to extend if the Salvation Army was willing to stay on for six months, look after the service, because we do realize that it's an important service, and we would retender to see if we had any other offers. Because the principal thing here, Mr. Chair, is adding staff. I think we were either seven or eight staff that would become part of Norfolk County and Holloman in the health department. And even though it's paid for by the health board, I think that was our biggest concern. So, and, and again, I'm not being disrespectful to Heidi. It was my fault, and for that I apologize. No need to apologize. Councillor Height. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to staff. It appears here on the sheet there's seven workers we're looking to hire if should this proposal move forward in this way uh, What would the s total salaries on that be per year? Uh, it um, might be in the previous report, but I don't see it in this report. Mr. Chair through you to um, Councillor Height um, I don't have the exact figure with me this evening um, but I, I believe that the last time that um, this report was presented um, the total staff-related costings, salaries, benefits, materials, and supplies, was in the neighborhood of 600000 out of a total budget of $1.5 million. Okay, thank you for that. I guess, I guess I have to bring my old reports with me. Um, now, uh, through the chair to you, the, 
the bid document, and I can see where some of the vendors or possible providers would have struggled with only three weeks to get this full service in in house. Was there a fee to bid on that, Mr. Chair? Three to Councillor Height. No, there was not. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Oliver, please. Thanks very much, Mr. Chair. My only question at this point is a, is a quick one, and and perhaps Heidi sort of addressed it. I did see the recommendation from the committee, from the advisory committee, regarding contacting Dunville Salvation Army, but, I, but it doesn't appear in our recommendation this evening. So did staff just feel they didn't need to act on that part of it because they couldn't find any confirmation of a direction to re-RFP? Re so Mr. Chair, three to Councillor Oliver. We do not, uh, staff does not have authorization to extend the contract of the Salvation Army. No. We okay. had the conversation. They have indicated interest. If it's the wish of council to extend the contract of our current provider, then we will require uh, a motion um, exempting staff from the purchasing policy okay. to do so. Similar, I would, I would advise um, council that as the Consolidated Municipal Services Manager, Norfolk County Council can accept the recommendation of the advisory oh, yeah, committee I, I or can make a different yeah. decision. I, I understand that part, Heidi. And, and, and in fact, you confirmed for me, I think, that you did contact them and they have expressed an interest. So you did, in fact, act on that recommendation from the advisory committee. Yes, we did. Thank you. Anyone else? Mayor Luke. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I just have a question, and again, I do recall in the previous report, uh, reading, Mr. Chair, the report of Org Code Consulting along with their recommendations, and certainly, as Heidi indicated, this is the same request as what we looked at in the last staff report. Uh, through you to Heidi. Heidi, is the recommendations you feel that are placed before us here on the first page of your report, in your opinion, are these, is this the best way to go about uh, at this time with uh, assisting, helping, moving forward to tackle this homelessness uh, prevention uh, services that the province funds us to provide? Do you want to give us your professional opinion on this, please. Thank Th you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, through you to the mayor. Uh, it is my professional opinion that the, the request that is before council tonight is the best service delivery model in order to be able to provide emergency housing and supports to people who are homeless or at risk. The, or, uh, the report that we received from Org Code Consulting was uh, quite comprehensive. It's based on research as to the best approaches, the evidence-based approaches, approaches to ending homelessness. And Org Code Consulting is, is a leader in this field. They have worked throughout Canada, throughout the United States, and throughout, throughout Australia on this issue. As well, my opinion is based on what we have seen in Haldeman and Norfolk, and that is that without the support piece of the work, people are at increased risk of cycling in and out of homelessness. And that we will be challenged, without that support component, we will be challenged to truly end homelessness in our communities. I appreciate that, that seven staff is a big ask. We are talking about providing service across two counties that when we drive from west to east is at least an hour and a half and similarly north and south. And so for us to provide adequate equitable service across that geographic area um, I would suggest that, that this is the minimum number of staff that we require, and it is a lean team. By providing the services directly as part of the Social Services and Housing Department, it is still my opinion that that allows us to better integrate 
the homelessness services with our other housing services that we offer with our services in Ontario Works and with our services in public health that can be accessed to, to support people who are in need and it allows us to make sure that we are meeting our accountabilities to the province and that we are providing the service in, in a consistent and equitable way and that we're ensuring customer service excellence. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Councillor Brunton again, please. Um, are you ready for a motion, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Well, I would uh, like to, uh, and I guess, Heidi, based on what you've said, do you want to forego the purchasing policy to confirm that the uh, Dunville uh, will continue with the program? Is that correct? You want that confirmation first? Oh, Mr. Chair, through, through you to Councillor Brunton, if if it is the wish of council to extend that contract by six months, six months, then that motion is required. Okay. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman, that we uh, forego the purchasing policy and that we, uh, Heidi, contact the Salvation Army to extend the contract for six months. Mm -hmm. And then the second part of that motion that uh, staff be required to re-RFP the uh, program um, prevention service, homeless prevention services program. You've yeah. heard the motion? And I'd like to speak to it for a moment. Go, if go right ahead. ahead. Well, uh, Councillor Wells, oh, second. Yep. Councillor Brunton, you may speak to it now. Well, I, uh, you know, it may be, uh, and I think Council understands what we're dealing with here, but uh, it may be that we don't get any bids again or we don't get any bids that are successful. But I would ask staff, and I'm not going to ask it in the form of a motion, that I think we need to look at this program. My recollection when we dealt with the first time was there's $600,000 worth of salaries here. And I think, uh, Heidi, you said $1.5 is the program. That's a big chunk of the program right there to providing the service. So I think it's, it's, it warrants another look with a, a longer uh, bid time, if I could use that word. And I would also ask, and again, I'm not making it a motion, that when you look at how this service is provided, um, and I appreciate how you've laid it out in your own eyes that you want seven staff, but I don't think we need to dictate to any supplier how I mean, you've got to give them parameters, but I don't think we have to tell them you need seven staff to provide this. I think that's their decision they have to make. So, anyways, I made the motion. I spoke to it. Thank you. Okay. Well, it's a second it, right? Okay. Now we have Councillor Black. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. And I won't support the motion on the floor. Uh, Council dealt with this once before. We asked for uh, that an RFP go out. It went out, uh, was not successful. It's back again, uh, both times in the report staff of um, indicated their preferred uh, way of putting this all together. It's a complicated uh, formula and it's uh, this being funded 100% uh, by you know, upper level governments, not the municipality. Um, there is a need to get on with this. There has been a need for quite some time. And uh, I don't really need to wait any longer. I um, believe and trust uh, Heidi with what she has said, that in her, her view and staff's view, this is the best way to proceed to provide this service for those people that are in need. Okay, thank you. Councillor Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick question uh, to Heidi with respect to the, the potential re-tendering. Uh, Heidi, we, I think we were all disappointed that four bid documents were picked up and yet you received no actual bids from any interested service providers. Uh, I guess the first question, the simplest one, did you, did you have any feedback from any of those potential bidders during the bid period giving any indication of perhaps why they were unable? To, to submit a bid. Was it too short a time period? Did they not like the idea of almost mandating the positions? Did you get any feedback from any of them? Uh, Mr. Chair, 